Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to film another Lush Empties video, basically where I give you like a full review of the product because I finished it up. And I have quite a few black pots and empty products over here. So I'm not gonna go over every single one because this video will be like an hour long. But I have some of my most favorites and some of my least favorites and some in between. Anyways, let's hop into it. So first off, I'm gonna start with a hit. Now, I normally don't ever talk about bubble bars, soaps, bath bombs, anything like that in these videos. Normally because once I've finished a product up, I have nothing to show you guys because it's completely gone. But I did have a few of these, so I saved part of it to show you guys in this video. Now, this is a unicorn horn bubble bar. Now, this makes so many like frothy and luxurious bubbles in your bath. But this fragrance is absolutely incredible. It smells like a lavender like a sweet lavender kind of scent. It goes beautifully with the Twilight Bath Bomb, which is one of my favorites. And it's got little sparkles in it and it makes your bath like pink and just really fun. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love this. I hadn't used it in so long because I think it came out a couple years ago um, around this time and I had tried it then, but I hadn't used it since then. And um, I forgot how much I love this. So definitely worth checking out. And if you do want to try it out and get your hands on it, I would recommend going to the store quickly because like I said, it is limited edition. So I'm not sure how many they'll have left. Next up, I'm gonna hop into skincare. I have quite a few skincare products here. The past few months have been really big for me in my skincare routine. If you have not seen my updated skincare routine, I will link that up above. But I have been kind of experimenting and trying a bunch of different products out to find what I like best. Now, normally I would always talk about Dark Angels. I did finish up another pot of this, and Dark Angels is really scrubby. It's got tons of charcoal, so really good for absorbing excess oil. Now, I used to use this religiously on my face, especially when it was a lot more acne prone, like six months ago, but recently my skin has become a lot more dry, a bit more sensitive, so I thought I would opt for another alternative, although I did end up finishing this up as like a body scrub. The one thing about Dark Angels that can kind of be kind of annoying is that every batch is a little different since it is handmade, and sometimes the batches will actually stain my skin. Like the charcoal will literally leave like residue and it won't wash off completely. So that can definitely be a bit annoying because you never know what you're gonna get. Some batches are good and they don't stain, other batches will stain your skin, so that's the only thing about this product that is kind of frustrating. But overall, I still really love this product. It's amazing as a body scrub. Or like I said, if you do have a bit more oily skin, this might be better suited for you. But yeah, this is just like a long time favorite of mine and I finished up another one. So once I officially retired Dark Angels for my face, I ended up trying a few new cleansers. I had Angels on Bare Skin, which I believe I tried it like years ago. I tried it a long time ago. Um, but this is like one of their best selling face cleansers. It's got like almond in there and like lavender. Very soothing and calming ingredients. I think it's normally best for more sensitive to normal skin. Um, it's just a very gentle scrub for every day. And I did like it, it was very soothing, very calming, and I did leave my skin very soft and like supple feeling, which I really liked. But I ended up trying a couple other cleansers as well because I, ugh. Like I always say, is it really a Jacqueline video unless I drop something? Anyways, I have a couple other cleansers here. These are actually both Herbalism, which is my new cleanser of choice. Like I said, if you've seen my skincare routine, I talk about this a lot more. But basically, this is like a lime, not lime green, it's like a bright green color. There's nothing in here because they're empty. Um, but it smells like vinegar and a bit like salad dressing or like salt and vinegar chips, which is a little weird. but. I can get over that if it makes my skin amazing and I've just been in love with it. Now I've been using Herbalism for about two and a half-ish months now and I'm already onto my third pot which is almost done. It's like getting to the very bottom of my shower. Um, but the reason that I love this so much is that it is still suited for acne prone skin but it's a bit more moisturizing and less oil absorbing as Dark Angels. Basically the best way to explain it is that if Angels on Bare Skin and Dark Angels had a baby, it would be Herbalism and it's like my perfect cleanser. So obviously that was a huge hit for the last couple of months. Moving on to face moisturizers, I have quite a few here. I think because it's been winter time, my skin has been extra dry. I've just been like layering on the moisturizer. Um, the first one here is Skin Shangri-La. Now this was a repurchase for me. I bought it a while ago, um, but I ended up repurchasing it because it is like the most moisturizing and like buttery face moisturizer that Lush makes. And it smells so good too. It kind of smells like almond butter and like kind of nutty. I don't know, I really like the fragrance of it but it is very thick on the skin. So if you have oily skin or you don't like the feeling of a rich moisturizer, I would avoid this. But for me, it was perfect because I really liked the feeling of like a luxurious layer of moisturizer, especially for nighttime. I never would really wear this in the daytime or under makeup, and I probably wouldn't recommend you to, um, unless your skin is super, super dry and just kind of sucks it in like a sponge. Um, but as a night cream before bed, it's incredible. Just a small little dollop of the product goes a long way. You just kind of massage it in, and the next morning your skin is like so baby soft. It's incredible. Um, although I do like this and it definitely is a hit in my books, I probably won't be repurchasing it anytime soon just because the warmer months are kind of coming, so I probably won't need it that much moisturization. Is that a word? Probably won't need that much moisture. Hydration. You know what I'm trying to say. Next moisturizer, could you guess it? I've got Celestial. 
Plus Seal is just my all-time favorite moisturizer for every day. I normally wear it day and night, unless, like I said, I'm doing Skin Shangri-La. Um, but Celestial is just so perfect, great for sensitive skin. It's really simple in ingredients. I feel like I talk about this all the time, so I'm not gonna really talk about it too much. But another hit, we're doing good. Okay, sticking to skincare, but moving on to some misses. I've got Cosmetic Warrior here. Oh wait, no, that's not a miss. <laughs> this one is, Catastrophe Cosmetic. This is a fresh face mask. It's the blueberry kind of purpley face mask. And this one is really good for declogging your skin. It's got tons of like kaolin clay, I believe that's what it's called. Oh, talc, just kidding. Um, but it's very like purifying. It just like sucks everything out of your skin. And although it smells really nice, I find it's too like oil absorbing and too, um, like deep cleaning for my skin, which is weird because I normally like deep cleaning masks. I really like the mask of Magnum NT, which is pretty deep cleaning. But after I was done using it, my skin just kind of felt stripped of all the oils and it was almost like too cleansing for my liking. Um, anyways, not really right for my skin type. If you are super oily, I think you'll like it. Or if you have a lot of like declogging and just like junk you want to get out of your skin. Um, but for my skin type, it probably wasn't the best and it was a miss for me. Now a face mask that was a hit is Cosmetic Warrior. Now this one is great if you have acne prone skin, which you guys know I've been dealing with acne for a long time. And if I ever have kind of like a fresh breakout and I have say like an important event the next day or like, I don't know, like a photo shoot or something where I really do not want a pimple on my face, I will use this. This has garlic in it and tea tree, which are really antibacterial and really like anti-inflammatory. So it'll kind of help reduce the breakout and just kind of like soothe it and make it less like, you know, out there. Um, that was a really bad explanation. Um, anyways, I really like this mask. This product is kind of like an oldie but a goodie. I've used it tons before and I don't think I will ever stop using it unless my skin magically never has breakouts anymore, which would be a dream. Um, but yeah, would definitely recommend this if you do struggle with breakouts. Sticking to the mask theme, but this one's a little different because it's not for your face. It's actually a foot mask. This is called Volcano. Now this one I feel like nobody ever talks about. It's kind of like one of those products that just kind of gets forgotten about. But I ended up deciding to try it one day because I would only see it in the store and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. I need a little foot mask. And I'm gonna be honest, my feet sometimes are one thing that I neglect. Like I've got no problem, like I'll take care of my skin, I'll like do my nails, but my feet, I just kind of let them go, I'm gonna be honest. And if it wasn't for me getting pedicures once in a while, my feet would be an absolute mess. So I was like, you know what, maybe this is what I need in my life. So it says you're supposed to cover your feet in it and then it'll help soften and deodorize your feet. So I was like, you know what, my feet could use some softening. They're feeling a little not lovely right now. Um, and you know what, I was kind of underwhelmed with it. This isn't exactly like a miss, but it's not exactly a hit either. It's kind of just in between. I mean, it did make my feet slightly softer, but it wasn't like anything life changing. It was kind of fun to do. I had like clay on my feet for a little while, but I don't know, it wasn't like overall like a crazy awesome experience, but it wasn't a bad experience either. So I'm kind of on the fence with this one. Next up, I have a shower jelly here, and this one is called Refresher. And this one is kind of like a bright yellow, citrusy kind of shower jelly. If you don't know what shower jellies are, it's basically like a jello, but it's like a soap, so it cleans and lathers. It's really interesting. You should definitely try one out. Um, but yeah, I really like the smell of it actually, even though it is a bit more on like the pledge cleaning supply kind of lemony scale, there is kind of like a sweet, like fruity note to it. But I definitely do like the smell. It's very refreshing, as the name would suggest. Um, but the reason that I'm going to call this a miss is just because I would never reach for it. So I would have it in my shower and I enjoyed the smell. Shower jellies are fun to use, like I said, but they are a bit more of a hassle in the sense that like you have to break a piece off, squish it into your loofah. It's just a bit more time consuming in general and I don't know, I would just really never reach for it. So it ended up just kind of sitting in my shower for a long time. I just told myself to like finish it up one time. So for like a week I was taking like generous pieces and like using it all up. But yeah, I don't know if I'm not really excited to use a product or if I'm not reaching for it every time I go into the shower, then that is a miss in my book. So I feel bad saying it because it's not a bad product, but it just wasn't for me. Moving on to another miss. I feel like some people will be angry at me for saying this, but it's the Rub 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 Shower Scrub. I feel like this product has been around forever and it smells really good actually. I do really like the fragrance. It's kind of like um like a cherry blossom slash laundry, fresh laundry scent. It's very refreshing and I feel like a lot of people will like it. It's not like a very opposing, overpowering floral scent at all. But basically what this is, it's a scrub that you use in the shower. It's like a blue kind of like cobalt blue kind of color. So you basically just scrub it all over your body and it helps exfoliate and soften your skin. Now I have heard people say this is kind of like a hybrid between a shower gel and a shower scrub because it has like cleansing properties to it. And it does definitely get like very slippy once you like add water to it. Um, but yeah, honestly, this was a miss for me guys because it just wasn't scrubby enough. 
Now, I really do like a vigorous scrub, especially for my body. So I normally use ocean salt, and that's like the scrubbiest of the scrubby. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing I've ever said. Um, but no, it's extremely scrubby. So it's very exfoliating, and it just makes you feel like, ooh, like my skin is exfoliated. You know what I'm talking about? And this one was more of like, a, eh, like it would scrub, it would do the job, but it wasn't as incredible as ocean salt. And if I had the two in the shower, I would definitely reach for ocean salt. So that is why this one is going in the mist category for me. Next up, I have another hit. This one is African Paradise. It's a body conditioner. Now this one is like a smaller size. I don't think you can purchase it in this size. This came in like a gift set. Um, but basically what a body conditioner is, you kind of use it like a hair conditioner, but for your body. So you clean your body first with like a soap or a shower gel, and then you apply the body conditioner on your skin and let it sit for a little while. So it's kind of like an in the shower body lotion, but you rinse it off after. But this leaves your skin so incredibly like moisturized and just so hydrated, so hydrating, so hydrated getting confused. It makes your skin feel so hydrated, but it's not necessarily too oily when you come out of the shower. Like I know some products can leave like an oil residue. It's just more of like a soft and like moisturized feeling versus like a slippy, greasy oil. Um, and I really like the fragrance of this actually. It's a bit more unexpected for a lush product. I find it's a bit more mild and it's, it's not even like florally. I don't even know how to describe this fragrance, honestly. Let me read you some of the ingredients. So it's got almond oil inside, shea butter, watermelon, mango, cocoa, clove leaf. It's kind of like a random mix of like fruity, but floral and a bit earthy. Honestly, I don't even know how to describe this fragrance. You just kind of have to smell it for yourself. Um, but yeah, I absolutely loved it. It's such a great product, especially for the winter time. Or if you're a bit more lazy and you don't like to wait for like a body lotion to absorb into your skin once you get out of the shower, because it kind of does it all for you. So yeah, definitely a big fan of this product. Now I know Lush does another fragrance in this. It's called Rose Argan. It's like one of their best sellers. Now I have tried that like a while ago, but I actually think that I prefer this fragrance to Rose Argan. It's a bit more unique and unexpected. Um, but yeah, I really like both of them. Body conditioners are great. Definitely like a very unique product to Lush, so. Would definitely recommend checking it out. Okay, moving on to the final product that I'm gonna talk about today. Well, I kind of feel bad about ending this on a bad note. Oh well, this one is a miss. This is a Love and Light hand cream. Now, I was super excited when I first received this because it smells absolutely amazing. It kind of smells like, it kind of smells like stale Fruit Loops, but in like a good way. Now, I did notice that the fragrance does kind of change when it goes onto your skin, and it does kind of smell a little different on everyone, which I'm totally okay with. The reason that I don't really like this is that I didn't really find that it was effective. Like, it didn't really moisturize my hands. And this can be more of a personal thing just because I do wash my hands quite a bit, and um, they get dried out really easily, so I do prefer more of like a rich, buttery hand lotion, or like a body butter kind of thing. Whereas this was super, super lightweight and very like runny in consistency. So, I mean, if you don't like a residue or like a feeling left over on your skin at all, then I think you'll love this. But if you do like something that is a bit more moisturizing and that lasts a bit longer, probably don't go for this one. So yeah, it was a little disappointing because I do really like the fragrance, but it really didn't do enough for me to want to reach for it or for me to, you know, go out and repurchase it. Okay, so that is it. Those are all of my Lush hits and misses. Oh, and one more thing. Everyone always asks me in the comments if I know about the recycling program at Lush, and yes, I do. Basically, if you have five empty black pots, you can take them back to the store, and you basically can pick out a free fresh face mask. So make sure that you guys save your pots and bring them back to the store. And I will have a lot of redeeming to do <laughs> after this video. Um, anyways, thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye! Close it should be when I spray it. <laughs> I don't know if that was too close or. It feels like someone just spit on my face. It's even further away, I don't even know. I'm crying. <laughs>